Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to DIY a beautiful solid weather resistant privacy lattice fence. This is the corner of my backyard. I just finished the works for this four units privacy lattice fence. It's just give my family a better privacy protection. Let me show you how did I make it. Okay. Okay, let's start. First of all, let's talk about what do we need to build the privacy fence. The tools and the materials. Here are all the tools I used. A circle saw to cut the wood, a drill driver to drill the holes, a couple of drill bits, and especially this long one. This is a one foot long and a 5 16 diameter. This is very useful to help me to drill a deep hole into the post. The hand screwer. Sometimes you just want to manually slowly drill the holes into the wood because you don't want to crack the wood. Measure tape and square hammer the the deck screws. I use eight by two, eight by three screws and the small wood screws which is four by one. And the nails, smooth finishing nails. And this one foot long and five sixteen diameter metal thread pot. The wood. First, the privacy lattice fence panel, which is one foot high, and the original length is eight feet. It's very easy to cut into any length you want by the circle saw. I love this fence panel because of its beautiful color it's made by treated wood so that it's a uh, weather resistant 2x2 two two cedar wood I use this to build the framework of the fence panel and also attach the panel into the post 1x6 treated wood I use this to be the cap on top of the fence panel. And this 6x6 cedar wood post extension. I love this cedar wood because it's beautiful, it's solid, and it's light weighted so that it can be very stable on top of the existing post. The most important thing here is to strongly connect the extension post with the existing post. Here I'm not using any metal binders to bind them together. That's not beautiful and not weather resistant and the metal will finally got rotten by rains. I'm gonna to connect the two posts with one foot metal thread pot. The two ends of the pot will be deeply inserted in each post by six inches. That will be a very safe and strong connection which can resist any strong wind and will never get rotten. I draw two diagonals on the post. The intersection point will be the center point where I can drill holes. By doing this, I can ensure the two holes on each of the posts can be exactly aligned. To make sure the hole is drilled vertically, I use the sinister drill bit first.
Make sure it is vertical with a square. If it's not, I can reduce the hole with a small angle as early as possible very easily. Then I drill a bigger hole with a second thicker drill bit. When the drill bit reaches the end, you don't need to reverse the spinning, just let it spin in the same direction. Take it out slowly, the chips will get out easily. Align the second drill bit again to make sure it's still vertical. Then I use the third drill bit with the final 516 diameter drill bit which is just shorter and can only drill 3 inches deep. I like the game with the square to make sure this last drill bit is vertical. foot long drill bit with the same 516 diameter to drill a 6 inch deep hole. Carefully align with square again. way we will never make mistake the hole will be exactly vertical In the same way, I drill another 6 inch hole on the extension post as I can do this in the ground, so it will be much easier.
thread port into the existing post. And install the extension post. Now we are done. perfectly aligned and connected with a strong thread of inside. Smart trick here is there's a crack I need to avoid. I drill the point one inch away from the center point on the diagonal so the two posts still will match to each other symmetrically. Then we can move on to the second step, build the double side lattice panel. Mm -hmm.